Hi, and welcome back to the channel. The last couple of videos we've been doing has all been about brakes, up, upgrading our brakes, repairing them, getting rid of that squealing noise and, and servicing them basically. And it's all gone well. Um, no big surprises in there. We had a lucky find with the back brake. Um, one of them spring holders was just about ready to fail. So we caught that just in time and put two new back plates on. Now, the last real job we've got left to do is bleeding up the brakes. Now, that is a hard job when you're on your own. So we're employing one of these guys. <laughs> and that is a power bleeder kit. This is our power bleeder. I borrowed it from my brother. I bought one. Um, mine was on the cheaper end. It was around about 30 quid. Not sure what the price of this is, but it's a decent bit of kit. So that there screws onto the top of your reservoir, just there. You fill this with um, fluid, dot four, synthetic for the crafters. We then prime up this system, so that means we're getting the fluid through and into there. Once we've got it through into there, we can tighten everything up and then we start pressurising it by pumping this up. And I'll show you all that in a minute. But we're going to take this up to about 12 psi, 14 psi. We don't need a lot more than that. Um, this will go up to 28 psi, but that's that's a lot there. Um, I think you might da start damaging things if you went too high. But yeah, we've got this little bottle. This is what we're going to use to catch, and it is just it is with just a screen wash bottle. Drill the hole with a bit of flexible tube in it, and uh, that works a treat. We use it all the time. But yeah, that's all we're going to need, and a couple of spanners. So not a major big job. Um, not very time consuming either. When you're on your own, you can use this system very, very easily. The one I bought connected to a tire and uh, it was a bit cheap. <laughs> really was a bit cheap, but this thing is something else. Yeah, I lost my bottle. I'll never lose my bottle. <laughs> anyway, let's get stuck into it. It's a good idea to change a brake fluid every two to three years or 30 to 40,000 miles. Now, it's so varied because the manufacturers can't agree on an exact amount so that is an average taken from most manufacturers but it's a good idea because your brake fluid the additives in it break down over a period of time and due to the amount of usage they have so them additives um, as they break down can cause gunk and uh, discoloration in your fluid but also um, there's another problem, brake fluid is hygroscopic, so that means it absorbs moisture. Last thing you want in your brake system is moisture, because that affects how they perform terribly. So, your symptoms are you'll get a hard pedal, or you could get a spongy pedal. Your clutch pedal can become hard, yet yeah, because it shares the same reservoir, and you get brake fade. So, anybody who's had brake fade, squeaky bum time it, it really is squeaky bum time you think you're going to die you think you're going to crash and uh, you soon go and get your brakes fixed after that but I've been there mine was in a HGV different problem altogether but big squeaky bum moment okay so we're using Coma dot four synthetic oil for the crafter this is what's recommended and we just fire that all in there First thing we're going to do is we're going to prime up the system. So all we want to do is just give this a couple of pumps. <laughs> Best off put the lid back on there. What a cabbage. Does help. There it goes. Don't know if you can see that the. Brake fluid is running around the system. So we're up to here. That's good. I'm happy with that. Now we need to just put it on the van. Just release the pressure. Or it will just start going everywhere. Keep a wet, damp, wet cloth, would you? Just wipe up any mistakes. Just to help us out a little bit, we're going to take some brake fluid out of here. A 
couple of bits of leaf, something. So, just squeeze the bottle and then let it draw in what we need out. You might have to give it a bit of a hand. That will do us, to be honest. We didn't need a lot out, but that gives us some room to work with. Now, let's get the... So I've just got to get that little end just to sit down to one side. There's little baffles in it, inside there, so... I think at some point this did come off, but... Um, it seems to be seized on at the minute. So don't over tighten that, just want to make a nice seal. And then we're just gonna start pumping this up now till we get it up to around about 12 bar. 12 bar, 12 PSI. My God, if we put 12 bar in it, it would be to the side of the planet, I think. It would just take off. So keeping an eye on everything, as you can see, it's starting to lift the fluid level in the reservoir. Just keep going until we get to where we want to be. That's quite stiff, that. I think that's enough. So that'll do us for what we're wanting today. Um, doesn't need a lot of pressure on it. Got no leaks on this end. There's no hissing. So it's holding its pressure. I think we're good to go. Before <laughs> before I start rolling around under the van, I'm going to go and get changed because uh, this could end up a messy job. We're good to go. So we've got the cap on. We've primed the system. We're pressurised. We're about 12, 13... Um, bar at the PSI there, sorry. So I think that's good enough for us to start bleeding the brakes. Okay, got my trusty bottle wedged in between the wheel and the tie well. I've connected it onto the bleed nipple and with a 12mm spanner we're going to start letting some fluid through flow, hopefully, if I can get that on there properly. Just gonna wiggle it. There you go, there it goes. So the beauty of the power bleeder system is you don't have to have anybody helping you on the other end. You can just let that run. That's filling up nicely. We'll let a couple of hundred mil go through there. Well, around about hundred mil. That should get all fresh fluid through. That's us. And the last thing to do is make sure you put the cap on because we don't want that getting to the point where we can't work on it in the future. So you see I've spilt a bit of oil on my hands so I need to go and wash that off quickly. Right. Let's get in and get this one done. This one's a little bit more awkward because Put the wear sensor in the way, so I will. <laughs> and the top doesn't want to come off. Oh, that was really, <laughs> really is struggling to come off. Hey, well, there's a wheel. All that bollocks. And there we go. This is a little bit to the bubbles and muck. And we'll leave that to run for a little while again. So let that fill up to about there. This side has got the shortest distance to come. And the master, the slit. Uh, <laughs> The reservoir is directly above us, so 
I wouldn't expect there to be a lot of fluid in that leg. There's one thing, there's no bubbles in it, so I'm happy with that. Which is always a good sign. And to be honest with you, it's quite clear. So, I think this must have had its fluid change at some point, but while we're here doing this job, we're, we're going to make sure that everything's right. Give us the best fighting chance. Well, that's the front two brakes bled. Um, went pretty, pretty straightforward, to be honest. Got a good couple of hundred millilitres through. Um, and we're still, if you have a look at that, we're still on around about 12 PSI, so that's hardly dropped. So that pressure is forcing through our brake fluid. And if we check the reservoir, it's keeping it at a nice level there. It hasn't filled it all the way to the top. So the actual pressure of the fluid and the air that we've got here is holding everything in place. So I'm happy with that. The back brakes are slightly easier if you can get underneath. So I've got mine up on, the, on our levelling ramps and uh, that is enough just for me to crawl under. Now we'll let that run for a little while. But again, no bubbles, clean fluid coming back through so I'm very happy with that um, just shows that the system has been maintained I know I think I might have changed the fluid you know I keep I keep questioning myself I may have changed the fluid last summer and uh, but anyway we're doing it again now for peace of mind and um, hopefully this is enough to to keep us going for another few years all right that's enough for that I think we've got enough. Again, no need to go too tight. Um, break the seal on that. That should allow any fluid in the end just to, in the pipe just to run in. Like so. Give everything a wipe over. And then pop our cap back on. Job done. Well, that is us completely finished now, and obviously, we've hardly used any pressure again. So, that system has proved itself to be really good. So, we'll let, let all the pressure out now. See how the level comes back down. So we can now take that off. I think that, that is meant to come off there, but it's stuck on, so I'm not going to force it off. But we'll just release this. And we'll get that... Oh, shit. Right. <laughs> I was going to say, we'll get that cloth and uh, dry that little bit up. But yeah, shit. Clean up to be done now. Yeah, keep tight hold of that. Oh my god, I've got fucking dropsies today. Where the hell did that go? Right. Don't know if you can see it. Right down behind the steering rack there is the cap, the basket. So I'm going to try <laughs> and spray it off. With brake cleaner. Hey, that'll do. It's on the floor, but while I'm in here, we will give all this a good clean off. Make sure that that brake fluid is not going to cause us any problems later on. I don't know what it touched, I don't know what it hit. I think that'll do this. Children, we dropped the little debris basket and it's covered now in dirt. We're going to give it a blast off 
with the uh, brake cleaner as well. Give that a nice. So it's good stuff that. It will. You can use it for all sorts. But that's nice and clean now. It's like brand new. Can't believe I dropped that, can you? <laughs> Firm grip, back on. Yeah, just having one of them days today. I think I'm tired. It's my excuse. Well, the last thing for us to do is to top this up. We're currently sat on minimum, so we'll just add a little bit more in just to bring it up. That's us, right on the money. Job done. Well, we're at that point again, end of another video. So I hope you've enjoyed that video. I think bleeding your brakes and changing your fluid every now and then is a good idea and it's gonna keep you on the right side of uh, your MOT guy as well. You know, if your brakes are tip top, got nothing to fail you on, has he? You might have noticed this little van in the background. Have a look, it's a little 4x4 Transit. Great little van, absolutely love it. Love how it's been made out, but looks are deceiving. That there is my friend's van. He's fell foul of a self-builder that just didn't know what he was doing. And that self-builder has endangered his life and the life of my friends. Not just once, there's multiple things in that van. So the next video I'm going to show you will be all about how that van fails on every, every aspect. Gas, electric, solar, um, night heater. It come to me with a problem. The problem was they could smell fumes when they were using the night heater. Turns out the exhaust was right beside the intake. These are basic mistakes, but whoever built that van didn't have a clue what he was doing and didn't know the implications behind it. Could have killed himself or my friends. But anyway, that's the next video. If you're enjoying what we're doing, please think about subscribing, sharing it, at least leave us a comment. Let's build the momentum. Let's keep this channel going and growing. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time when we're ripping that thing apart. It's not going to be a video about how we fix it. It's a video about what to look for when you're buying it. Why not head over and check out our new website, www.thecraftyblinders.co.uk. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok and our Facebook group, The Crafty Blinder Van Builds. Thanks for watching.